Is retirement in the Philippines as good as people say? Uh, I would have to say there's a honeymoon period. I would also say it depends on the person. Um, because what happens is, is the Philippines ideal for meeting a younger woman? The answer is yes, of course it is. Um, but so is most of Asia. I would also say though, um, the Philippines offers people that speak English which if you're in your 60s or whatever you're not really looking at learning another language unless you're forced to most of the time so it has that benefit as well um, the poverty scale means that general cost of living can be relatively cheap if you live basic uh, what I mean is you can find cheap housing cheap electric cheap food etc um, which means for the retiree or expat you can be anywhere on the scale because you can be living on a sh small uh, social security check of say five hundred dollars a month and live quite comfortably if you live within your means we all know somebody who doesn't and then sits and gripes about it but then you find out they're in a hotel with a strange man that only costs a few hundred pesos a night um, but the rea reality is there is a sliding scale if you haven't got a large enough budget you can adapt you can um, you can pretty much adjust the whole thing one of my friends actually lives in a shack um, a, sh a shanty I'm going to throw my phone on the other side of the room because it keeps beeping um, but the his place is in like uh, one of the rough areas but he's content there he's retired he's got his pension coming in he just gives his money, his money to his wife and she deals with everything he's like as long as I've got my beer and whatever do what you like I don't care he's content um, because he's got no worries no aggravations nothing bothering him so he, for him He's happier there than anywhere else, plus his wife's already got children from a previous marriage. I, I think she was a widow. Um, so he's got some family life that he didn't have before either. So he has people that would look after him when he gets older as well. So from that point of view, he's, he's content. But he's living in an area which is impoverished. It's, it's a shanty. They were... It's, <laughs> illegal construction they're not supposed to have a house there but they just do um, but he's content but then I've got some friends that have had lifts installed in their houses they spent a lot of money in their houses they spend seven to ten million pesos on some of the houses um, because they're thinking as they get older they need access to go up to the bedroom so they, they installed lifts um, inside their own home so you've got the two extremes, you've got living on virtually nothing and then spending money like no tomorrow uh, where this guy's running 8 to 10 air conditioning units where this guy at the bottom um, he watches TV and his feet, his head touches one side of the room and his feet nearly touch the other, it's just enough space for the TV <laughs> um, but like I said, happy and that's that's the key element here and um, what I find in like the UK and it's probably the same in the US because you have all these um, restrictions on living um, there's a cost to everything so they although you could actually survive here they make it cost you about this much because refuse collection and all this sort of stuff and I know somebody's going yeah but you've got to have this you've got to have that got to no no that's that's the way the system has become um, things still function before that happened in the Philippines a lot of it still functions even without those resources because it just does um, big government has sort of brainwashed many people into assuming that you've got to pay this to get this get and a lot of stuff we don't actually need um, you know like when you have a car I look at a car in the UK where do I need it for? to go to work and then what do you do in your spare time? Well, because I drive to work because so far, um, I have to drive to the gym. So 
it's a cost. It's not, if I didn't have the car and live work nearer, um, I could walk to work and actually not need the gym. So it's sort of counterproductive in many ways. But in the Philippines, you don't need a car. In the same way, you can commute all over the place for virtually nothing. It's very, very cheap to move around the Philippines. Even by plane, it's pretty cheap. But if you go via the bus services or go via the um, ferries and whatever, it's, it's very, very cheap. You can travel so far for very little money. And then if you just get a motorcycle just to keep yourself um, independent, you, you're doing pretty well. Those things are what makes the Philippines great. You know, the, you can do what you want, so you've got your independence, you've got a bit of um, support from the people around you. Uh, Medical-wise, if you've got good insurance, you've got good medical cover. If you've got no insurance, you've got bad medical cover. Um, but we've already discussed this before. But the key element to the Philippines over everything is nothing is enforced on you. It's up to you whether you want good insurance or no insurance, etc. Nobody is forcing you to do it. Here in Spain, we are forced to do it. You've got to have medical cover, either by paying taxes to the state or private insurance. Either way, you've got to have one or the other. That's it. There's no, you cannot have nothing. They, they won't let you do it. Um, so you have to take these sort of things into uh, the right mindset. Of the fact that the Philippines makes you responsible for yourself. And that's what I love about the Philippines is I can do what I want. You know, if I don't want to wear a helmet, I know you still get fined in the Philippines. I don't have to wear one. I wouldn't actually, if I had an accident and got killed or whatever because I didn't wear a helmet, I wouldn't be there blaming anybody else. It'd be the fact that I've done something that I, you know, I did myself. Um, and I think that's the thing, you know, the, you're responsible for yourself in many ways. You look after yourself, you take care of yourself, you're, you'll have people guiding you. Locals will say, oh, don't go there, it's dangerous. They will say, um, go and get some x-rays or something after you cracked your ribs, after you fell off something or whatever. They will look after you in that sense. If you're sick, they may bring you fruit to the house. People are generally, generally friendly. Um, here in Spain, people are friendly, just I don't see most of them. Uh, you see them from time to time, but no way in comparison to the Philippines where you go out the front door and you'll see about 10 people in about two minutes. Uh, in Spain, I can go out my front door and see two people in five kilometers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Okay, there may be tourists around, but at, at this time of year, but a lot of time, you've seen how quiet it is here. But the Philippines, you've always got somebody to talk to, somebody taking interest in you, somebody who is interested in you. These are the key elements of what makes the Philippines such a great place to retire to. Now. Here is the things that put people off or makes them change their mind. Noise is a major thing in the Philippines. People have rattly, noisy motorbikes. Uh, Duterte is going to change that mind. Video key and parties go on till people are so tired and drunk that they don't want to sing anymore. Um, people are generally friendly but may do stuff that can be annoying, like burning rubbish at five o'clock at night, where their smoke goes in through your windows. That sort of stuff is pretty common. Uh, people do not respect people's spaces. Some people let this annoy them, rather than accept it's just the way the people are. You know, you ain't gonna change it. It's, they don't even understand what they're doing is wrong. So you getting upset about it, it's not actually gonna make any difference because they, they just think it's a crazy cano, it's a crazy foreigner. But they, they cannot see that what they're doing is actually hindering on your life. They, they don't even see it a lot of the time. So you've got to understand a lot of these little things become a big problem over a period of time. And I know several retirees that have left the Philippines because they just couldn't stand the neighbors, um, corruption. Uh, the fact that they wanted to do some small businesses and were constantly getting hindered by bureaucracy. 
um, and the impossibilities of imports and exports due to the corrupt customs. Um, I also know people that have simply had issues with extended family to the point that they it was easier to move to another country than actually deal with the families. Um, the key to all this is you, it's all about planning. So I advise research, decide what you're going to do and then make sure that nobody's going to interfere in your life in a negative way. For example, if you move into a subdivision, you can cut off a lot of these problems. But bear in mind that some of the bigger problems, like corrupt mayors and whatever, could be locked in there with you. Um, I do think there's a lot of changes coming with the new Philippines Prime Minister, uh, Prime Minister new Philippines President. Uh, but we have time to wait and see if those things will happen or not. Don't assume because something happened you will get sympathy as well. I remember a article relating to, I think it was an Australian that fell down a open sewer in Colon Street in Cebu. The mayor, Mike Rama, uh, because he, he went to see the mayor to complain about it, the mayor wasn't there and then it ended up in the newspaper that Mike Rama laughed it, if he doesn't like it he can go home. Um, Often that is the response you will get. If you don't like it, go back to where you come from. Now, that is often the defensive mechanism, because obviously it's not a solution, and the fact is anybody can fall down the hole, but rather than go, yeah, we'll get the hole fixed, you'll get the, go back to where you come from. It's much easier. But everybody does it. Um, it's not unique to the Philippines. UK is obviously doing it a lot at the moment with its anti-immigration thing. Um, but the point is you've just got to accept that you're in a third world country and people really don't care most of the time um, at the same time that's what makes it unique that's what makes it interesting and if you meet a good partner and stuff you can work the rest out the the key to all this is not letting anything annoy you and just plan things out so that you get the life you want if you can't do that you may struggle to be happy simple as that thanks for watching